Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you the third and final installment in my weight loss series as we talk about surgical treatments for obesity. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, check them out. I'll provide links in the description below. Episode one was about diet and behavioral changes to lose weight. Episode two was on prescription medications that are available to help patients lose weight and included my top recommendations. And today we will delve into surgical management of obesity. In order to be a candidate for bariatric surgery, you need to have a BMI greater than 40 or a BMI between 35 and 39, but have an obesity-related medical issue, such as diabetes or hypertension. Bariatric surgery is the most effective method of weight loss. A retrospective study of over 65,000 patients published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in December 2018 found that at one year, patients that had gotten a RUIN-Y gastric bypass had lost 31% of their body weight on average, and those that had gotten a gastric sleeve had lost about 25% of their total weight. And it seems as though surgery is the most effective way to keep the weight off as well. This same study gave data about these patients' weight loss at five years and found that those that had gotten a ruin y gastric bypass, the total weight loss was 26%, and those with a gastric sleeve were at about 20% of total weight loss. A study of patients with obesity in Sweden studied the even longer term effects of bariatric surgery. They found that after 20 years, the mean total weight loss was 26% after ruin y gastric bypass, and only 1% with non-surgical management. And most patients do typically regain 5-10% to of their body weight back in the first 10 years after surgery. 98% of bariatric surgeries done today are performed laparoscopically which means small incisions are made in several sites in the abdomen and cameras are inserted. This allows for smaller incisions to be made and a faster healing time. There are four common bariatric surgeries. The first is the ruin y gastric bypass. Second is the gastric sleeve. Third is the gastric band. And a fourth option is an intragastric balloon. Of these four, the two with the best data and long-term results is the ruin y gastric bypass and the gastric sleeve. The gastric band is becoming increasingly less common and in 2019 only accounted for 0.9% of bariatric surgeries. The reason for that is that it caused less weight loss, often needed to be revised, and patients often gained the weight back. In the intragastric balloon, most commonly called the Orbera intragastric balloon, has similar issues with weight regain, but the intragastric balloon is often used as a bridge to surgery like a ruin y gastric bypass or the gastric sleeve. So between the ruin y gastric bypass and the gastric sleeve, is there one that's better? Well, there have been several randomized trials, and the data was excellently summarized and evaluated in an article in JAMA in January 2018. In one Swiss study of 217 patients, there was no significant weight difference between the two surgeries at one, two, and five years. At five years, the patients that had gotten a gastric sleeve had lost 61% of excess BMI versus 68% with a ruin y gastric bypass. And while the complications were different, they occurred at about the same rate as well. For those that had the gastric sleeve, 16% required reoperation most often for severe acid reflux disease, and 22% of those with a ruin y procedure needed to have a reoperation, most often for an internal hernia repair. But another study randomized 240 patients to either ruin y or gastric sleeve, and at five years, this study found a slightly higher percentage excess weight loss with those that had the ruin y bypass. They lost 57% of excess weight versus 50% loss of excess weight with the gastric sleeve. It's felt that patients with type 2 diabetes may benefit from the ruin y procedure a bit more since it may treat insulin resistance better long term, but I don't think studies are completely clear cut on this issue. And if you have severe acid reflux or Barrett's esophagus, which is changes to the esophageal lining from chronic stomach acid, the ruin y is probably a better option for you since the gastric sleeve can worsen acid reflux. But the ruin y procedure is considered to be a surgically more complicated procedure, so it's important that you find a surgeon that has a lot of experience with them. In the end, it really depends on the bariatric surgeon that you choose 
and which procedure he or she is most comfortable doing after going over all of your medical history. Does getting bariatric surgery benefit health outcomes long term? Well, in a short answer, yes. An Israeli retrospective study found that bariatric surgery in general was associated with lower mortality after a follow-up of four and a half years compared to usual care. While another study published in July 2020 looked at 18 studies that included over 1.5 million patients, they found that patients that had bariatric surgery had a 28% lower risk of death, 50% lower risk of cardiovascular death, 61% lower risk of type 2 diabetes, 64% lower risk of hypertension, 67% lower risk of elevated cholesterol, and 54% lower risk of ischemic heart disease than obese patients that did not have bariatric surgery. Wow, that's significant data. So how are the two procedures done? The Roux and Y gastric bypass surgery is done by creating a small gastric pouch that's then connected to the small intestine. Since the stomach is much smaller, it forces patients to restrict how much they can eat in one sitting, but it also limits the amount of food that's absorbed. By reducing portions of the stomach, there are also hormonal changes that can help patients to eat less by reducing hunger and increasing the sensation of fullness. The sleeve gastrectomy or gastric sleeve is when a portion of the stomach is removed and a tubular stomach is created. Since this causes the stomach to be a lot smaller, the patient can't eat as much in one sitting and it also reduces the hormone ghrelin and other hormones that lessens the patient's hunger. This is the most common bariatric surgery performed in the US and around the world. This procedure is easier for the surgeon to do since there are less surgical reconnections that need to be made between the stomach and the small intestine. With either surgery, most patients leave the hospital one to two days after the surgery. So what are the best ways to ensure that your surgical procedure is successful? Number one, remember that this is a surgical procedure and has all of the potential complications surrounding any surgery, such as bleeding, infection, and death. The best advice I can give someone is to choose a knowledgeable and experienced surgery at a bariatric surgery center with the MBSAQIP seal of approval. This stands for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery Accreditation and Quality Improvement Program. Number two, remember that the ability to absorb certain nutrients will be different after your surgery and it's incredibly important to have ongoing follow-ups with a physician that can follow vitamin levels like B12 and vitamin D. Your surgeon or physician should recommend which oral vitamins you should be taking depending on the type of surgery that was performed. But usually these recommendations include taking things like oral vitamin B12, vitamin D, and iron. Number three, your team should at the very least include a skilled surgeon, a nutritionist, a counselor, or a psychologist and a medical physician who will continue to follow you after the surgery. Number four, you should have meetings with a registered dietitian and counselor or psychologist about your unhealthy relationship with food and delve into any other addictions that you may have. An increase in alcohol and drug abuse has been seen after bariatric surgery, likely because patients are replacing one addiction for another. At the root of any addiction is trauma, pain, and unhealthy coping mechanisms. For the person with obesity, they've been using food to self-medicate and simply getting a surgery won't help them heal from the emotional and physical addiction without counseling and support. A good bariatric surgery center will require counseling and dietitian services. At the end of the day, I want each of you to have the ability to live your life to its fullest, and you must have good health to do this. If you're limited by your weight and have tried diets, exercise, and medication, I encourage you to seek out a bariatric surgery center and start exploring surgical options. Thanks for joining me.